Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the psalms from the Bible, which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 23 in the douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 24 in the RSV. On the first day of the week, a psalm for David. Brief context for this psalm. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and all they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and hath prepared it upon the rivers. The book of Genesis refers to water being over the earth, and that God separated the waters from one another. But in many books of the Bible, water is used to refer to chaos and inhospitable conditions as well. Who shall ascend into the mountain of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place, the innocent in hands and clean of heart, who hath not taken his soul in vain, nor sworn deceitfully to his neighbor? Evildoers can't expect to arrive in the kingdom of God. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, and mercy from God his Savior. However, people who avoid sin will be given special blessings. This is the generation of them that seek him, of them that seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your gates, O ye princes, and be ye lifted up, O eternal gates, and the King of glory shall enter in. We need to be open to God being a part of our lives. The image of a gate being lifted up may simply mean that it's being opened, allowing God in. However, to me, it also reminds me of how Samson carried away the gates of the town of Gaza on his shoulders, which prevented them from being able to close the gates of their town. In short, anything that stands between us and God is something that we can well do without. Who is this King of glory, the Lord who is strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle? Lift up your gates, O ye princes, and be ye lifted up, O eternal gates, and the King of glory shall enter in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. The image of a king entering through the gates raised for him by a prince after a battle is a reference to an old custom where a victorious king, returning from a campaign, would have the gates raised to let him in. When this happened, the people of the town or city would leave through that same gate to welcome him and escort him inside. This imagery would have been very familiar in the time of David, one of the most victorious kings in history where battles were concerned. This is another psalm of pure praise and worship, putting a lot of focus on reinforcing the kingship and authority of God, and to a lesser extent, how he seeks to share his victories with us, by coming to live with us after the battle. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.